Um, it's surreal. I, I definitely feel like excellence in television is something that I'm striving for, not necessarily it's something that I do currently embody. So um, I'm grateful for that acknowledgement and just and the reminder to keep striving for it. Because you know, women matter. Our stories are really important. The, the one thing we all have in common is that we come from a woman, no matter how complicated that relationship might be for you. And so it's important that we have representation in front of and behind the camera. And what's, your, what's the best piece of advice you have for young women who are really hoping to break into the entertainment Why? That would be my question. No, um, I would say, um, no, it's important to know why you want to be a part of this industry. It's important to, and I don't have judgment about why, but you should know for yourself why you want to be a part of, why your goals are your goals, so that you can really pursue them with integrity and be true to yourself. That's a big title, isn't it? It's a really big title, and particularly when bestowed upon me by you know the extraordinary um, women who represent this body, and also the women who've been celebrated in the past. I don't quite know how it happened, but I'm I, you know I'm very very overwhelmed and pleased to be accepting it. I think it's really important to recognise the successes of women because we're not we're not a niche group. We don't speak to a niche audience. We're just all interested in working on good projects and reaching audiences in whatever way we can. But I still think that we're in the minority. You know, when you think about women directing those blockbusters, it's between five and nine percent, depending on who you talk to, of all those blockbusters made. And that's not a great percentage when you consider the talent out there. And so I think the wonderful thing that, that Women in Film does, apart from events like tonight, which is talking about success, it's, it's recognizing those moments when women need a leg up, or pardon the that sounds a bit sexual, I didn't mean that at all. I mean, when they need, when they need a help mid-career or, or when they need career advice or they can benefit from a network like this. And I think it's still important to, to recognise that there's a long way to go for women. I think you have to work out what you're going to say. It's about what you say yes to, but it's also what you say no to. I think a healthy, a healthy dose of self-respect and a lack of fear is really important. Um, it's a real encouragement, you know, I've, I've been working for a long time in the business, so it's a great encouragement, uh, particularly appreciated, I think, because of that. And um, it's a great organisation, so I'm thrilled to, to have met everyone and be here, and the other women are so wonderful who are being honoured tonight. And uh, uh, I like, you know, it's, it's women are underrepresented in this business, as we know, so it's, it's great to, you know, celebrate that and kind of discuss it. So I think, yeah, it's exciting. Well, it's because still, you know, there is less female screen presence, you know, it was like 30% last year or something was actually women on screen and um, uh, it's still a discussion to be had, you know, Jane Campion talked about a lot at the Khan this year and I think it's just a very vital conversation that we should still be having and discussing why it's that way and try and change the rules and try to have a positive approach to it. So. Max Mara. Um, I love a jumpsuit, and uh, I like the color was really fun, and I just uh, like to go to a formal event to wear something a little sort of chic. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Um, well, my relationship with women in film it should be somewhat obvious. I mean, I am a woman who works in film, and I think it's a it's an incredible. Um, I've had a really interesting relationship to film as a woman. I think I've often made films that have kind of, that have, I don't know, questioned or shifted a little bit the way that women are seen. That's interesting to me. I'm curious about that, and uh, and I I feel like if we can all support each other and recognize how 
you know, what a complicated thing it is to be a woman working in this world. You know, and, and also it's like, I just flew in one second ago from New York because I didn't want to leave last night because I have two little kids and I feel like like so many women in this room would totally understand that. So I'm a little more tired, so I'm working a little harder to like, you know, get it all together in order to be here. But that's part of what it means, I think, to be a grown-up woman working in film. But I love, I love my job and my place as a woman in this world. I, I love it. You know, I really do believe that if you, if you really truly go after and look for what really moves you, what you personally think is an expression of your relationship with the world, I think you will, I think it will work out. I think it's when you start to bend over backwards and, you know, try to be someone that you're not, which all of us do, sometimes do. That's when you get yourself in trouble. You know, it's such a big honor. Anytime you receive an award in the namesake of somebody like Norma Zarki, it's uh, such an honor because she was such a pioneer and a trailblazer for uh, women's rights and women. And um, So for me, I was really honored that it was in her name. And then also, you know, I, I really get excited when people applaud the work of all of these wonderful people outside of acting. I always say educate yourself. I mean, I I had my college degree, bachelor's degree, um, uh, long before I went into acting, and I knew I went into it with the confidence that you know I'm going to do this. I'm going to arm myself with with the tools necessary so that I'm prepared for the opportunity when it arises. And so I think all women, especially, you have to prepare yourself for that one opportunity that you'll get because you never know if you'll get it again. You know, honestly, I've always wanted to host this award show. I have been a big supporter of Crystal and Lucy and the Women in Film organization. I love what they do. 50, we as women represent 50% of this population. And in the industry, we don't necessarily see that reflected and not necessarily in our world either, but specifically in the industry that I'm in. And Women in Film is an organization that is really beautifully addressing that and putting, getting the funds and putting them where they need to go. And every year that I've come to this event, it's been extraordinary and wonderful. And the women that are honored and the things that they say, I was like, just ask me. If you want me to come, I'll be there. And so that, there it is. And you know, I, I have to say, someone said to me very early on, if, if you could do anything else, do it. And I feel like, but I mean, I feel like I flip it around a little bit. If this is the only thing you want to do, do it. But if you are going to depend on it to get paid, you might want to figure out other ways to support the roof over your head and the food that you need to eat. But I can tell you that whether I was getting paid, and there have been many times when I'm not getting paid to do what I love, I'm doing it. I can't help it. It seeps out of my bones. So that's what I tell people. If it's your passion, it's your passion. Don't ever let anybody tell you to give up on your dream. But if you have to find another way to keep a roof over your head, do it. I'll just give you a nutshell. I'm really excited. Um, ABC has put us on After Modern Family, which is such a vote of confidence in our show. Um, it is a half hour comedy that is about a family exploring cultural identity and racial identity through the joy and the love of different generations. And it's myself and Anthony Anderson, and Lawrence Fishburne plays the father. Um, Lawrence and Anthony are both executive producers, and I'm really excited, and I love the role I'm playing, and it's great. It sounds It's, it, I'm overwhelmed, I'm completely honored. It's, it's, to, it's particularly being with the group of women that they're acknowledging tonight. I think I'm still in a dream, um, and, uh, and uh, maybe I'll land on Earth one day, but it, it's a huge honor, and it's an, an amazing what, what women in film are doing, the work they're doing. Um, I hope I can make them proud and not mess up tonight. Well, I think, you know, women make up 50% of the movie-going audience. We're, we're half the population. We have a lot of amazing creative things to say. And I think that uh, I look for a day where it's so balanced that we don't have to talk about gender anymore. And, and um, But we're not there yet. And the fact that women in film do so much to work to creating that balance. You know, I hope Frozen showed you can do a film with two female leads, co-directed by a man and a woman, and you can have the world come. So, um, but a lot of women in film are great about getting that message out. And but 
I think that tonight's going to be such a special night, mostly because of the honorees. I mean, this selection of women stand for everything that I think the organization does. These women are at the same time super successful, but super philanthropic and caring. They are so graceful and demure, but so funny and rounded. They're really willing to be part of the camaraderie, to give back, to speak out, to help with the issues of lack of parity and career, and career sustainability. So I hope that merely being in their presence will be the highlight. And then we have all sorts of fun and unexpected things happening through the night um, that we've never done before that includes some really special videos and bloopers and a whole new kind of opening for the show. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of laughter too. Well, I hope what makes the Crystal and Lucy so important is that it reminds people to look at the achievements of those people, women, who really by numbers and statistics are only occupying a very small part of the whole pie when it regards opportunities. And to watch the exceptional things that we do, not begrudgingly, not because we're wild and crazy feminists, not because we have a chip on our shoulder, but because we love to do it, and we love our art, and we love what we make. And to remember, look at these are the people that do it. Sometimes the people behind the scenes aren't men. Oftentimes they are women. And I think to have a time to remind ourselves of that, but also celebrate, you know, we never want to exclude men, and there are many men here tonight, and as a matter of fact, some of our program grantees and winners this year are men, but we want to remind people that content should be about women as often as it should be about men, because what the heck, we're 50-50 on this planet, we might as well have 50% of the stories, right? Well, Max Mara has been a 13-year supporter of the organization, and we've been at it together from the beginning. And what it means to the organization is that we can keep the lights on. They're that important to us. They are our major donor, have been for many years, believe in us to the end of time. And um, I think what's created such a good partnership is that what their brand stands for is just the same thing that our brand does. They like the, the casual but elegant woman who's smart and caring, but also competitive and achievement oriented. And the clothing shows the same, and I think we're just good partners for each other. Well, it has become a tradition. We have become family, Max Mara and Woman in Film. So actually, I'm quite proud to be here again. I mean, I couldn't just believe that it is the ninth year that we're giving the Max Mara Face of the Future Award to a very talented actress. And actually, this year, it's just a fantastic one. It's Rose Byrne. She really deserves that, that prize. I mean, she has been acting since she was 15 years old. She is just talented, she has grace and style, and she has done big television shows as well as films, so from Damages, and I mean, we all know Bridesmaids and any coming up, so I think she is a fantastic woman, and she's so natural, and when she came to Milan to see the Max Mara fashion shows for winter fashion shows, she just was so incredible. I mean, she came from the airplane and she got a food poisoning, so she was really feeling bad, but she didn't hesitate to do interviews and photos, and this is what a real woman is like, right? Yeah. It's always been important to us to really support talented women or talented people in general, and it comes quite natural that we as Max Mara, who are doing women's fashion, have chosen this organization as a partner. And it's fa fantastic to be in Hollywood and to dress uh, the girls here. And I, I think it's also a big experience for us. So we have been growing together. Well, it, it's 20 years of work. Um, I was one of the co-founders of the, the Public Service Announcement Program in 1993. In fact, it started out of our house. <laughs> My husband said, what are we, a charity? I said, right now we are. You know, it has been an incre incredible privilege to chair the PSA program for 12 years. And if it wasn't for the Hollywood community supporting women in film, we couldn't do the work that we do. So tonight, I may be going up there, but it's for everybody. A lot has been made about the fact that Kerry Washington has been the first African-American woman to star in a network drama in 40 years. And that is something. Yeah.
I like to believe the something is that the business has finally started to catch up with reality. But for a lot of people, that something is that Carrie is Olivia. And for many people, this being that she is the first in 40 years means there are a lot of requirements placed on her, both as Olivia and as Carrie. When you are the only one, people feel you must represent everyone. But that is not storytelling, and that is not creative, and that is not acting, and that is not our chameleon. So there is where I think you might find that Kerry Washington is a trailblazer. Oh, God. Oh, I'm out in public. Hmm. Uh, thank you, Shonda, so much. You are such a gift to all of us, and um, the writer that you are has changed me as an artist, so thank you for that introduction. Um, I work for a woman, Shonda Rhimes, who, I'm going to talk about you like you're not here, <laughs> who, <laughs> no, no, stay, um, who, because of her courage to step into her light and step up and own her voice, has provided an opportunity for so many other women to soar in front of and behind the camera. That's what happens, that when we step up for ourselves, we create opportunity, whether it's because we inspire other people or we employ other people, or both. In this room of exceptional women, there isn't much I can say about Kate Blanchett's impressive body of work and remarkable talent that all of us here don't already know or haven't witnessed ourselves. Kate, as we know, is a two-time Academy Award winner among a myriad of other accolades and accomplishments. She is an extraordinary actress of the theater, even serving as co-artistic director of the Sydney Theater Company for over five years, along with her amazing husband, Andrew Upton. Her exceptional commitment to her craft and the generosity in which Kate has shared the exploration of her work with her audience is the ultimate gift worth endless applause. Be me a Thank you, Laura. I, I was represented by um, Wolf Castella, but I think um, Laura should be my publicist. So, Lisa, <laughs> last 17 years have been great, but um, <laughs> goodbye. Um, but, you know, tonight is important. I mean, I, it's really big. This is a big deal. It's bigger than I realized. I don't know what I thought we would be doing, quilting or something, but we're <laughs> clearly not doing that. <laughs> and we are not gathering either because we're niche, but rather I think because female achievement is still largely discussed as, as being niche. And we need to remind ourselves and acknowledge uh, the achievements uh, and the sight of the stones yet unturned. People often plague her with, you know, sort of unoriginal puns about her size, not matching her boundless energy, you know, cliche classics like, Great things come in small packages and things like that. But Eva Longoria <laughs> has, um, has long ago graduated from being just a petite sex icon. What's truly impressive, impressive is that she has dedicated her infectious passion and energy to over 30 philanthropic endeavors all the while maintaining her crown as a petite sex icon. <laughs> Carrie, every week, and in movies, but every week she makes us feel like, like sleeping with the president who just killed the Supreme Court justice is okay. <laughs> like, it's fine. <laughs> and, and then Rose Burns in Bridesmaids made us think never to eat Indian food again. And Jennifer Lee, you've inspired us all to let it go. Um, and Kate Blanchett um, has just always made us feel like we're so inadequate as actors. Um, 
So um, I just want to say thank you, Women in Film. Um, you sustain my every step. Thank you so much for, for being part of my philanthropic journey. Um, and, and thank you for this award. Thank you, Lakey. I was very lucky to play the role of Anna in Frozen because playing a Disney heroine was quite literally my four-year-old dream come true. But getting to play Anna specifically, a heroine who is as warm and as real and as quirky and as wonderful as Anna was, who saves the kingdom, saves the day by sacrificing for her sister, that was beyond my wildest dreams. It's made me very, very proud, and I have Jennifer to thank for that. At Women in Film, the greatest joys and successes happen when a one-on-one -on -one impact can be made on a filmmaker's life. In fact, the programs designed to do this are the crowned jewels of their philanthropy. They are the mentorship, scholarship, granting, and finishing funds programs. Max Mara has a continued commitment to the development and growth of success of women. The Max Mara Face of the Future Award is given annually to an actress for outstanding achievement who embodies style and grace. This year, the honoree is the exceptional Rose Byrne. much. Thank you to Nicola, especially for referring to me as refined. Clearly she hasn't seen Neighbours. So. The more women we can see as directors, writers, studio heads, executives, showrunners, publicists, editors, the more beneficial it is for every workplace and every story told. It's a powerful business we're in and with a loud voice and it's imperative we realise that women are consumers just as much as men, and to have our stories told and our audiences embraced. Um, women in film continue to strive for this and nurture this with the organisation, so I'm honoured to be here tonight and makes this award all the more special. And thank you to Max Mara for this incredible outfit. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Kathy Shulman, and thank you, Women in Film, for this incredible Founders Award. Here to present the Max Mara Face of the Future Award is Max Mara's Nicola Maramati. Mara. 